And today, on another episode of As the World Turns, Tim finds out Monica has a penis. Dun dun dun! What up everybody, it's your boy Tim Castleman. Welcome to the Two Drink Tim Podcast. Got a little um, daytime drama for you there. There you go. Been uh, catching up on the soap since it's summer. It's hot as hell in Texas, okay? Don't judge me. I'm not a tropical person. I was not meant to be outside. I did not get to the top of the food chain to sweat. All right, so I've been spending a lot of time inside. When Netflix is all done, you got to turn to channel 11 and 13 and act like a 90-year-old grandma. Catch up on your latest and greatest soaps. I actually haven't watched a soap in here. So I watched one for about 15 minutes, and I was like, oh, shit, this is like crack. i got to get away from it before it gets in me, and I'm hooked for life. All right, well, there you go. That's the exciting world of Tim Castleman. Welcome to the Two Drink Tim podcast. Great to have you back here for another week's episode. And this week's edition is going to be one that I've been thinking a lot. It's been on my head and heart a lot lately. Uh, so I'm going to share it with you guys and be really frank and open and honest and vulnerable. And hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the, ba- in the ass too bad. So uh, nothing crazy this week. I do want to say thank you guys uh, to everybody. It, apparently it was only guys. Uh, thank you to everyone, male and female, that reached out about the haters episode a lot of good laughs and jokes uh, were had about that and uh, felt good to kind of get that off my chest and it's kind of funny that I talked about haters last week because in some way I feel like I've been a little bit of a hater this week and this is what I really want to talk uh, about and uh, I have it written down just as limiting beliefs but it probably extends to a lot more than that so let me let me just be open and honest and real with you because uh, I know no other way and you know I find the best way to work through the shit that's going on in my life is to work it out with you or somebody that I pay 85 bucks an hour to and you listen in a lot cheaper right so here's the deal right my friend and I do consider him a friend Ben Atkins right decides this week he wants to release a podcast right my gal pal Rachel Rofe, again, someone I do consider a friend, decides this week that she's going to release a, a nonfiction book underneath uh, her name and immediately my immediate core carnal thought was those motherfuckers what are they doing copying Tim Castleman don't they know they don't need to release a podcast Ben I already got the true drink podcast man I got this iTunes I got it on lockdown and what is Rachel Rofe doing releasing a nonfiction book doesn't she know that I've got a nonfiction book getting ready to release I can't believe it what is she doing that why is she thinking that what is she doing that why are they doing that to me and then I stopped and I was like wait a second man you're your own worst enemy here And what is up with the limiting belief? So I want to talk to you guys a lot about this today. I want to tell you some steps that I've taken. I want to be full disclosure up front. Okay, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be honest. Okay, and I want you to understand I don't have this all worked out. This is just where I am right now with it. And maybe a year down the line, I'll have the perfect solution. I don't have that yet. I just have the solution that I'm working with, with duct tape and fucking matchbooks to kind of keep this tank uh, known as Tim Castleman alive, right? So let's talk about the, the issue. So Ben releases a podcast. And in typical Ben Atkins style, right, he can't be like me who's like, hey, everybody. I got this podcast. It's called the Two Drink Tim Podcast. He's like, listen up, bitches. Fearless Social in the house. We're about to own motherfucking iTunes, right? In 48 hours, I think he's like within the top 20 of all uh, podcasts of all. Not just like his category. He already dominated that day one. Day two, he went like sub 20 of all the podcasts in the history of podcasts. Like, I have no idea how you do that because I still think it's just me and my mom, right? And three guys in a basement, circle jerking each other i I don't know why the circle jerks there you live your fantasy right um like so i have no idea how to do that but my immediate thought was like man what are you doing why are you releasing a podcast man like i got a podcast you can't have a podcast we can't possibly do similar and like yet different things and then I'm on Facebook, so I'm fired up about that. I'm like, my boy's cramping my style. What's he doing? What's he doing? And then I see Rachel face like, hey, you can go get my book on how to do goals, right? Um, it's, on, it's free on Amazon. Go get it. I go click over. It's like 500 in Amazon out of all of them, right, for free. Not paid, but free. That's still pretty damn impressive. That means she's getting regular and consistent downloads. And my immediate thought is not happiness for them. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing the same thing I'm doing? So I started doing a lot of introspection long before this weekend. This weekend, it just kind of flared up, and that's what I'm sharing with you. 
And here's what I found out so far, because this is still a work in progress for me. So I'm definitely broken in some areas, right? My counselor would be like, Tim, I don't like to use the word broken. For you, I like to just use the word extremely fucked up. Like a good counseling session for me is if I can get her to be like, well, Tim, you know, their life's a dumpster fire because I taught her that word. So anytime she can regurgitate to that to me, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave a tip on this week. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the main point, limiting belief, right? So here is the false belief that I have, Okay that people are only friends with me or associate with me or work with me because they can get something from me. And the moment that I can't do something for them or can't save them or can't rescue them or can't help them or can't help rebuild their lives, then I'm of no value. And certainly if they could do it on their own, I'm of no value. And if they could do it better than me, then I'm really of no value. I'm like not just dog shit. I'm like complete and utter and total dog shit times two. And it has nothing to do with them. Right? I guarantee you Ben Atkins doesn't get up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm going to ruin Tim Castleman's today. Podcast released. Right? Rachel Rofay didn't stop her private jet Okay, and her dinner with Oprah and Deepak Chokra, who's like giving her back massage to be like, you know what, I'm going to ruin Tim Castleman's world by putting out this nonfiction book because I forgot the unwritten rule that said if Tim Castleman does a nonfiction book, there is not allowed to be any other nonfiction books past this date. That's right. Tim Castleman released one, and then after that, bam, all nonfiction books banned. And I do that not because of the person, but because I worry that, oh my God, if they can do it better, if they can do it just as good, hell, even if they can not do it as well as me, I worry that means that I have no value. But you know what? I mean, that's bullshit, right? Like I can say logically that's bullshit because the guy who listens to me, right? probably isn't Dr. Ben's target demographic, okay? And the guy that listens to me probably isn't Rachel Rofay's target demographic because, you know, Rachel loves me and I love her, but there are times when we're not even each other's demographic, right? She's like, stop being a jackass. I'm like, stop being a hippie. And she's like, I'll hug you the next time I see you. Great, good, we're in, right? So I know that, like, hey, the guy that likes this podcast maybe doesn't like a fear of a social podcast. Not that it's a bad podcast or, or a good one. I, haven't, I honestly haven't listened to it. I know it's Ben, so I know it's going to be top rate, and I know the shit's going to be awesome. I just haven't listened to it. But the guy that's listening to that podcast may not listen to mine or may like us both, right? But logically, I understand that. Emotionally, I'm like, oh, no. No, Ben does it now. I, I can't, man. I got no value. I got no skill. I got no worth. I got no self-worth. See, I used to work with this copywriter back in the day, a young cat, brilliantly talented, crazy underpriced when I met them. And we worked on a system to raise their prices, raise their status, raise their structure, raise their scale. Now, sadly, they never did anything with that information. But one of the last times we spoke, right, it was like, hey, I feel like you're trying to be the go-between and the intermediary between me and my clients, and you're trying to do that to hold me down. Well, in working through this process, I came to the realization, or the realization, if you will, that in some ways, she was right. You see, I had unintentionally kept her down, not because I didn't want the best for her, not that I didn't want her to make a ton of money and have huge status and get all of her goals and dreams and desires met. It's because if I wasn't the middle person, I wasn't the protector, I wasn't the one saying, hey, got a job on the line, that again, I had no personal value. So the thing I would tell you is if you're hating on something or you're hating on someone or you realize that you have what Cialdini would call like a click whirl response where it's just like this automatic response, right? Like I'll just be real candid with you. The reason I went into therapy was that I was totally distraught after firing my business partner because I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Because it seemed to me that every business relationship that I'd ever entered, joined, been a part of, I had at some point or another burned that mother to the ground. 
And I was like, why is it that when somebody pulls away just a little bit, I feel like they're pulling 100 miles away and I got to sabotage that relationship. I got to burn it to the ground. So there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no like, hmm, I wonder if Tim Castleman's a friend of mine. It's like, oh yeah, Tim Castleman and I definitely don't get along. He made that abundantly clear. So then I was like, why is that? Why is that? Why am I having this click roll response? And then I went and talked to somebody, which is very humbling, right? Because it's like, you have to admit to yourself first, like, I can't fix this shit by myself. Because I tried for years. I was like, I'll just try to be a better person. I'll try, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. And I couldn't do it. I could not, I could not do it on my own. And within one session of going and talking to someone, they had identified something from my past that I had like totally and completely forgotten about. I wasn't even aware of it until we had this session. And I'm literally driving home from the first session and I stopped my car in the middle of, not an intersection, but like in a six lane road. I pulled to the little chicken lane as we call it, the turn lane. And I just sat there and it was like I was watching a movie of my childhood and all this shit that I had no recollection of five minutes before was playing in HD color and sound and I could see it and then it made perfect sense. And then I connected the dots and then I started to see the pattern. And once I was aware of that pattern, then I was able to do what I do now, which is stop it. I see it develop and I'm like, well, hold on, old Tim, would have turned into Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Eminem, burn this mofo down. New Tim's just going to keep right on going, understanding that we don't fall for those pit traps anymore. So with that same discovery, I didn't discover the whole hater raid on other people and the reason why. Like I knew that stuff bothered me, but I didn't know why. I just knew it made me really angry. How dare they? How dare they? How dare they? And here's the fact of the matter. Like, if you think someone's wronging you right now, I got a news flash for you. They're probably not even fucking thinking about you at this moment. They don't give a shit. They don't live their life, right? There are people in this world, in my profession and in life, that if I saw, I would not piss on them if they were on fire. But I can tell you, each one of those people I'm thinking of right now in my head, I never wake up in the morning thinking, ah, I'm going to make their life a living piece of shit. Right? Because most of them have done that to themselves. So I'm like, hey, I think we call that karma, right? I know, I know, a cheap blow, but still. My point is, you think someone's wronging you, they're not. They're not intentionally wronging you. You have to, if you have the same response, you got to find out what's causing that response. And chances are, it's going to be internal. And when it's internal, that's great because the only thing you can really control is your response and reaction to situations. By the way, I am sending you all a bill for this. At the end of it, I paid thousands of dollars to learn what I'm sharing with you here for free. So you're all getting a therapy bill. Okay, just all. If we all chip in a nickel, right? Tim, Tim will love his grandpa again. I, I don't know. So... You have to find out what that was. So for me, that's what, it, that's what it was for me. If someone else could do it, good, bad, or indifferent, better, worse, doesn't matter, I felt less valuable. Now here's what I should do, right? I should do two things. And this is what I'm going to do because I'm going to, I'm working very hard on this and I wanna fix this, this problem, if you will. Here's the two things I should do. One, I should go to each of them and I should say, here's everything I know about this situation. Good luck to you. I hope it helps. If it doesn't, you know, if, if you knew all this shit, you know, at least I know that I gave you my full and unbridled support. The next thing I should do is when they're done doing it, I should go back to both of them and say, okay, tell me how you did it. Tell me what you learned. Let me learn from you. Then I should go out and do it like they tell me to do it. And if I get a good result, I should kiss their fucking feet and sing to the mountaintops about how awesome they are. Why not? You know what it really boils down to, especially at this level with the guru hood and, you know, who you're seen with and who you talk to. And it's ego, right? It's fucking ego. Like I was talking to a friend this weekend I hadn't connected with in months and she's like, how's business? I'm like, according to my accountant, life is amazing, right? Like I, I've had my best financial year ever and I've had my best year, uh, year to date sales. Like I've already eclipsed all the total sales I did in 2013 
uh, this month. I'm sure we'll eclipse it, which is crazy. Like five years ago, I was making $40,000 a year thinking, oh shit, Jay-Z ain't got shit on me. I made it. But yet, I'm still like, well, you know, it's going okay. I mean, it's just, you know, it's going all right. I mean, I'm not doing what, what this guy's doing or this person's doing or this or that. And, you know, I'm totally comparing myself to their life and their situation. And, you know, I have no basis for doing that, but I'm doing it. And, you know, I mean, instead of celebrating the fact that I've accomplished all this, I just feel like total, complete dog shit. Well, let me ask you, do you think that's healthy? Of course not. Of course not. Do you think that makes me get up on Monday mornings and be like, oh, man, I'm going to rock this week? Or do you make me be like, oh, shit, got to do it again. Got to get up on that horse and dance like a monkey. And you know what? This is just one of the many limiting beliefs that I've developed over the course of my life. And what I would tell you is if you have them, and here's a little hint, you got them. You got to start working on them. Right? I'll give you another one. Like, oh, I'm staying away from Facebook. Everyone's a Facebook marketer. Everyone's a Facebook marketer. I'm staying away. I'm staying away. That's not going to be me. You know, um, that's not going to be me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a limiting belief. I think my customers give a shit that I don't do Facebook or that I don't sell t-shirts or that I haven't done the easy way of getting traffic. You know who doesn't give a shit? about that my fucking bank my bank doesn't go hey tim we're gonna 2x multiply your deposit this week because you know because you're so amazing you see you know what i'm saying they're like because you work so hard because you took the hard road why everyone took the easy road which you think is easy but isn't my assistant is killing it with t-shirts she's also spending a thousand dollars a day on uh, some days on traffic that makes my testicles shrink up and, and give me another Adam's apple, a slightly bigger one. Makes the first one jealous. Why is that? Well, you know, I should be doing t-shirts. Oh, I can't because of this crazy fucking limiting belief, some fake honor that someone's going to come up to me and go, Tim, we've realized that you've struggled and now we're going to make your life. No, that's just not going to happen, Right? And really, I mean, honestly, think about it, okay? In this marketplace, in this world, do you think people want to go the hard route? All right? I saw somebody today on Facebook. I can't remember her name. I think it's Kelsey. Kelson, I'm sorry. I butchered it. My bad. And she's like, look, you want to become successful? Go read books. And I'm like, hell yeah. I remember for an entire year, I would get home. I'd fucking make myself a healthy choice meal or two. And I'd read the Gary Howard letter till two o'clock in the morning. I'd, I'd get like four hours sleep. I was a real asshole at my job and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I sacrificed so much. I told you guys about getting out of debt. I told you I drove a Chevy Cavalier while my friends were driving fancy sports cars. Guess what? That is rare. The guy who goes, I mean, I'm the worst. I, I'm, no, I'm not preaching from on high here. I'm the worst. I've bought so many pairs of ridiculous headphones over the last two weeks because I'm trying to find the perfect one. And it's so bullshit, right? I had nothing to do with the story I was trying to tell you. So let me tell you the analogy of the story. I want you to get it. Like, that is rare. The guy was like, you know what? I don't need a million dollars today. I'm working on a two-year contract, you know, or a two-year game plan. The guy was like, hey, I'm going to sacrifice time with my family and my friends. I'm going to do shit that, you know, I don't want to do for a long time so I can eventually do stuff that I want to do. That's rare. Talk to young bucks coming up, right? Because I'm an old timer, right? Because I'm in my 30s, apparently. Well, then I'm like, what do you want to do with their launch? They're like, I want to make a million dollars. It's like, how about you just get a list that will pull you a million dollars? over the course of the next year. No, 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 man. I got to make that million dollars right now. It's like so many people want to fuck on the first date. They don't want to work on it anymore. They don't want to be like, oh man, you know, I'm going to keep working on it. I'm going to keep putting in the time. I was in the military. People get in one good fight and they get divorced. I'm like, are you kidding me? My wife divorced me every time we fought, right? I'd be like, uh, I don't know. Oh, someone that's married a lot. I was thinking like the Duggars, but I'm like, wait, those are kids. So that makes no sense. People don't want to struggle anymore. So that's a limiting belief that's costing me money. I'll give you another one because they're just popping out right now. I don't want to have a big staff because it's going to be too expensive and I can't afford it. 
My buddy Ben Atkins has a humongous staff, according to me. Right? Way more than me. All I can think about is how much that must be costing him a month. All he can think about is how much it's making him. I guarantee you, if we compared bank accounts right now and in five years, one of us would be crying, and it probably wouldn't be him. That's a limiting belief. What I would tell you to do, because this is what I do. Okay, first of all, if you can't afford it, go talk to someone. I think that 10x is your return. It's a neutral third party that has no, you know, they have interest in your life, but it's not like they're your your spouse. It's like, no, honey, you haven't gotten fat at all. There's just more of you to love. It's, you know, instead of the personal trainer, it's like, look, bitch, you know, you put on another chin, they're going to have to start dressing you in moo-moos. Let, let's, you know, knock it off. So if you can do that, great. If you can't, do the home therapy, all right? And that is basically sitting down, grab a notebook. You have to put in some work, sorry. No no quick fix here. And ask yourself, like, why? Just sit down there and say, just write your observation. I notice when X occurs, Y usually tends to occur. Why is that? What is it in my past? Give it time. Sit there. Be uncomfortable. Right? Be uncomfortable. Well, shit, Tim, that sounds like work. It is work. I can't tell you the number of times I've worked through one of these issues and just been like, okay, I'm done for the day. Done, totally done, way emotional, cry like a little bitch, right? It's going to happen. I will tell you that on the other side of that, there are some huge breakthroughs, huge breakthroughs. I mean, I have a much better relationship with my friends now Right, I'm in a I'm in a happy and committed marriage that is working well, and we can communicate without wanting to kill each other. Right, my business is doing better than ever before, and oh, as a plus, I'm still alive. Right, all four things I probably couldn't have guaranteed two years ago, a year and a half ago. I didn't know if I'd be in this business. I was 30 minutes away from quitting. I was just like, fuck this. And I was making six figures. I mean, I know it sounds retarded. There's some guy right now who's like, what the fuck, Tim? I don't get it. I can't explain it to you unless you felt it. And if you felt it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where you think you got everything, how you're supposed to have it, how you want it, how it's all supposed to be set up, and it ain't anything that you want. And you're miserable. And you hate it. And you resent it. And part of that is because it's a limiting belief. Well, they can't do this. They can't they can do whatever the hell they want. They ain't thinking about you. Don't think about them. Go support them. Help them as much as possible. And then when they achieve the result that you're shooting for, then go to them and say, teach me. They may put out a hand and say, hey, cash on the barrel head. You know what? You pay that fee. I mean, if it's worth it enough to get pissed off about, isn't it worth it enough to pay? And Ben Atkins, if you listen to this, you cannot charge me for that information. And Rachel Rofe, if you're listening to it, same deal, right? I'll donate to a charity of your choice for both of you. But that's really what you got to do. You got to sit down. You got to find the reason. You got to find the external and the internal reason. And once you're aware of it, then you can start altering and switching how you react to it. And it is a slow process. Right? I want it to be over. I want everything to be over. I want to discover a problem today, have it fixed tomorrow, and be done with it. Never think about it. Autopilot, quick click whirl, fixed Tim Castleman. Does not happen. I still have issues a year and a half. They're less, much less. Something that used to knock me down for a couple days started knocking me down for a day, then a couple hours, then a couple minutes. Now it's an observation. But guess what? It's still there. And depending on how big it is, right, bam, it can go back. Last Wednesday, I had another thing. You know, I had to end a freaking relationship that I had started when I, you know, back the last time I can remember I was happy. I had to just end it and be like, I'm done. I release you. I am no longer responsible for you, your well-being. I'm not worried about you anymore. You do your life. I will not be a part of it for no reason. That sent me right back. Not as bad as it had been before, but it had sent me right back to where it was. It was tough. But I got back up a lot quicker because I did the work and because I'm starting to address it. And because I'm starting to come o- be, overcome these limiting beliefs, then I'm going to allow things to be easier. Right? Like I have this mentality, like it's got to be a grind. I got to grind. And it's like, wait a second. I got friends right now that don't grind at all. 
shit, you know, it doesn't look like they work very much at all, but they're making more money. Instead of being like, no, I'm just honoring me grinding out a living. It's like, why don't I go to them and be like, hey, you obviously have something figured out. Can I pay you to learn it? Will you teach it to me? Can I pay you? What can I do? And you know what? I may not like it because I guarantee you when I get behind the curtain, there's going to be a big shit show of stuff that I didn't, I wasn't aware about because I had assumed it was one thing and it really was another. And at the end of it, I may say, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm going to go back. My buddy Anthony Ayers, he told me something years ago. It was one of the first interviews I did. We were talking about biggest mistakes in IM and stuff like that. And you know, one thing we, we both agreed upon is that we, we love information and we love new ideas and we're always chasing new ideas. And one of the most profound things, I think it was his brother-in-law at the time said, um, and he said to me, and I've always kept it in mind, is water your own damn grass. You know, I think it's so great and perfect over in other people's world while they're sitting there going, man, if only I could be like Tim Castleman, have my own podcast and get drunk and record his thoughts and open himself up to ridicule and then, you know, get people to go, hey, man, that, that episode really touched me when you talked about your abnormally large penis like that. That really that really touched me, man. Sorry, I assure you I'm not crying. I'm just short of breath because I have asshole friends who like to get me sick and then let me cough it up for the next two weeks. So again, I would take a serious look. And if you, I would take a serious look at all areas of your life. And if you see those click world responses, it's time to get to work. It, as long as, I mean, if they're positive, you know, it's like, hey, every time I see a carrot, you know, I go have amazing sex with my spouse. Like, keep that one. But if you're like, you know, every time the Jets don't cover the spread, I beat the shit out of little Billy. Like, you should probably take a break and be like, hmm, let's work on this and figure out what the reason behind the reason is. And once you figure that out, then your whole life and your whole business can change. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. There are going to be some moments where you're like, ah, you know what? Not really sure this is worth it. And then there's going to be some times where you're like, totally worth it. Absolutely. But if you don't start addressing these limiting beliefs, I mean, let's just, let's just take it for it is. Okay. Let's say I kept that limiting belief. Well, fuck Ben and fuck Rachel because they're doing something else and I'm going to shut myself off from them and I'm going to repel and we're not going to be friends or I'm going to be coy and catty about it. Passive aggressive. What if I did that? Like, do you think those people are going to ever want to help me or give a shit about me or think like, you know what, Tim, I want to keep being your friend because every time I do something amazing, you're like, go oh, fuck yourself. Like who wants that guy? Or you know, like, hey, Tim, I got a question about the podcast. Sure, man. Let me tell you everything I can do to help you. And if you get a better result, will you come and share it with me? I don't even care if I got to pay. What do you think has a better long-term chance of success? Right? I mean, think about that. Of course, you're listening to you like, well, duh, number two. Well, it's number two is clearly, then why did I continue going to down path number one? If you can logically see that number two is the healthier, better, longer term success pattern, then why do I keep going down path number one? That's the stuff you discover about yourself when you start looking inward and you start attacking these limiting beliefs. And then slowly over time, working on the same one, you eliminate it, you evaporate it, and a new you emerges. And a lot of times it's for the better. So that's it. That's all I got to share with you. Sorry for the uh, Dr. Phil style um, type podcast. Hopefully you found some value in it. If you didn't, I promise I'll make way more dick jokes next week. I just had it on the heart. I wanted to share it with you. And, you know, I want to tell you that I believe in you and that I believe in your ability to change. I did not believe in myself uh, just a year and a half ago. But seeing the change and the transformation has been absolutely huge and essential to having a better life and a better business and a better relationship and all that stuff. So I would urge you to work on the most important thing in your life. And that is you be selfish, do the work, take the time, build a better you, conquer those limiting beliefs. And above all, keep listening to the Two Drink Tim podcast. So thanks so much for your time. I'll talk to you next week.